Let's discuss the effects of instruments to the measurements. So the quality of our laboratory experiments depends on the quality of the data measured. So how successful is our laboratory experiment could be similar to asking how accurate or how, or, or how precise our data set is. So that is why it is important to give emphasis on the effects of the different measuring device or the different instruments to our measurements. So let's try the following activity. So we have here four targets where the bull's eye represents the actual value or the true value of the measurement. So how can we or how do we describe the accuracy and precision of this um, of the targets? So the these are the hits in the target. So these X marks are the hits. So for for target number one so you can pause this video and then go back or play this video after answering to see whether your answer is correct or not so for target number one the description is it has high accuracy and high precision while in target number two it has low accuracy and high precision in target number three, we have high accuracy and low precision, while target number four have low accuracy and low precision. So by just looking at the target, we can pretty much define. So we can generally define and differentiate what is accuracy and what is precision. So when we say accuracy, accuracy is how close your measurement to the actual value or to the bullseye. So that's why here in target number one and then in target number three, there, the accuracy is high because the marks or the hits of the arrows are close to the bull's eye or to the actual value while the precision is the closeness of the the measurements to each other so this x marks represents also the measurements for example so how close are the measurements to each other uh, measures the precision of measurement so it doesn't have to be on the bull's eye or it doesn't have to be close to the actual value to call the measurement precise. So for example, this one is very far from the actual value, but still it has high precision because the measurements are very close to each other. So the level of accuracy and precision of an experiment will determine how useful is the result of an experiment. So a very inaccurate and very imprecise measurement will not really yield to a use useful result. Okay, so, so this is the definition. So accuracy and precision are two ways that scientists think about error. So these are two ways on how scientists reflect on the different errors so accuracy is the measure of how close a measurement is to the true value or the actual value value or the real value so we can also say that accuracy is true to its goal so if you want to measure something in comparison to the actual value in order to be called in order for your measurement to to be considered accurate then your measured value or your experimental value must be um, close if not equal to at least very close to the actual or the real value so it is the degree of closeness to the actual value these are the other names actual real value true value or expected value Accuracy is the measure of how small is the systematic error of an experiment. So the more accurate your measurements are, the smaller are the systematic errors. So later on, we'll discuss what is a systematic error. So precision, on the other hand, is the degree of the closeness of the measurements to each other. So ito, yung target dito, this is precise because the arrows are very close to each other. So if we, if the arrows are very close and then place 
far away from the target, it's still precise because precision is the degree of uh, closeness of measurements to each other. So it is also the exactness or repeatability of measurements. Precision is the measure of how small is the random error of an experiment. So the more precise your measurements are, the lesser the variation in data, thus the smaller are the random errors. So yung precision, sabi niya, ha, sabi dito, that the more precise your measurements, the lesser is the variation. So meaning, the data are, um, the data, the value, the numerical value of the data are very close to each other. So, hindi, hindi malaki yung, yung difference between the value or the numerical data mo. So, for example, kung 25, so the deviation would be 25.1, 25.4, not 25 and then some 30 and the other is um, 60, for example. So, if, if the deviation or the difference or the variation between the data is very large, then that is an imprecise measurement measure. Yeah, measurement. So here is a graphical representation of accuracy and precision. So we have here the line of best fit. So this is the line of best fit or the perfect ideal sensor. So they call our perfect ideal sensor. So with this one increasing resolution or increasing um, precision and then here increasing accuracy so as you can see when when the line is not close to the sensor it is described to have low accuracy however if you look at the so let's zoom it in if you look at the this ladder if you look at the ladder, so the ladder is very much close to each other. So very close to the line. So meaning their measurement must, must be uh, not really, doesn't have too much difference with each other. So meaning it has high precision. So here, it has high accuracy and high precision. So as you can see, the red line for accuracy is really close to the perfect or the ideal sensor or the best fit line and then the resolution is also or the the, uh, the precision is also high it's also high so yeah so while in this graph the accuracy is low and then as well as the precision because as what you can see here yung precision natin, yung mga mga points natin or measurements natin may kita mo siya dito, yung iba andyan, yung iba andito, so malaki yung difference nung measurements ninyo unlike dito, na maliit lang yung difference niya, so that's why ayan lang, so very close siya doon sa line natin doon sa, sa line ng accuracy, sa graph of accuracy so dito very far the, some of the data are very far from the trend line of the accuracy so here we have high accuracy and low precision so the red line or the the trend line for the accuracy is really close to the ideal sensor or to the best fit line while the precision of the data is low because as you can see the points or the data points are found some are here, some are there, so yeah, along this ladder, but they are not really close to each other. Okay, so in probability, so if we if we look at the um, curve, normal curve, so if this is the actual value, the level of accuracy, if this is the actual value and this is your measured experimental value, for example, the level of accuracy is determined by measuring how far is your measured value from the actual value. While the precision is how close uh, are your measurements to each other. So, anjan yung precision mo. It revolves around the measurement. So, the steeper the 
the normal curve, so mas steep yung normal curve mo, the more precise because um, konti lang yung difference niya with each other. So, hindi siya masyadong scattered or yung data are not really scattered. While kung ma mababa to for example, and then malapad, so yung ibig sabihin, your data are very diverse. Grabe ang pagkakaiba-iba nila. So, let's describe the accuracy and precision of the following graphs. So, here we have these data points. And, yan. So, this line, the line, this dashed line, is the actual value. So, these are your experimental value. So, in letter A, so how do we describe the precision and the accuracy of this graph? So, the, the accuracy and precision is both low because, um, for example, yan, so nakikita nyo yung sum of the graphs, ay, sum of the points are um, beyond 27, others are at 26 or below 27 or below 26. So, they have um, relatively, um, relatively na malaki yung difference with each other compared to this other um, data points. So, in letter B, it has high accuracy and high precision because the data points are close to the actual value which is 25 and they are, the value of the data are very close to each other which revolves around 25 grams. Well, here, it is not accurate but it is precise because the data are very close to each other so revolving around the value of 27 grams but they are not accurate because it is far away from the actual value which is 25 so how do we measure with precision so all measuring device have limitations so when you measure objects using an, a specific tool the tool has limitations on how so different different tools or measuring device has um, limitation on how precise it could measure the object. So, this limitation is what we call a reading error. So, yung reading error, it is um, a type of a um, a random error wherein when you go down to the reading error, it is difficult to estimate the value. So, for example, in an actual ruler, so you, you measure the length of something, for example, the bond paper, using the centimeter side of your ruler or the millimeters, using the millimeters. So, the smallest calibration of the ruler is um, millimeter. So, between between... Um, between the markings so the, the gradation from one markings to the other markings is very small so hindi mo naman siya basta basta mazoom katulad ng pag ginawa mo siya dito sa sa powerpoint di ba so we can zoom in uh, pero pag sa actual you cannot zoom in the ruler so hindi mo siya makikita kung saan siya pumunta kung saan siya mas malapit so those ano those in those situation we come to the reading error so we arrive to the reading error wherein we need to estimate and that estimation causes this error so in measuring with precision so, we need to do the following steps. So, we need to read all the mesh the numbers that the measuring device can show. And then, estimate the last digit. So, it is also important that while estimating, we analyze whether the measurement is more or less than the half of the interval or the halfway point from one um, gradation to another gradation. So, for example, we have these three rulers in different calibration. So, we have here one decimeter. So, these three are centimeter rulers. Pero dito, so ang, ang markings lang natin is 0 and then 10. So, this is one decimeter or 10 centimeters apart. So, the graduation, 0 graduation and 10 graduation is 10 centimeters apart or one decimeters apart. 
So, the, the second ruler is 1 cm. So, have 11 gradation. Or, yan, so, or 12. So, from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 graduation. And, the interval between graduation is 1 cm apart. So, unlike this one, ito malaki yung interval niya. So, pagitan ni 0 at ni 10, meron tayong 10 cm or 1 dm. Sa pagitan ni 0 and ni, and ni 1, meron tayong 1 cm. Ganon din sa pagitan ni 1 and 2, 1 cm din. So, while here, we have here um, another centimeter ruler, but the smallest graduation is millimeter. So, 0 to 1, we have 10 millimeters. So, meaning, each line here um, represents a an additional 1 millimeter. So, 0, 1 millimeter, 2 millimeter, 3, 4, 5 millimeter, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 millimeter. So, this 0 and 1 is 10 millimeters apart. So, let's determine now which of the following rulers can give us a more precise measurement. So, let's measure these crayons. So, in ruler number 1, so the best estimate that we, we, can, um, we can do, the best estimate that we can do is the crayon probably has the length of 9 centimeters. So how do we do that? So we do that by looking to, by, by dividing this, so for example, 0 and 10. So dividing this graduation into 2 and then divide it again in 2 and then look at kung saan mas malapit yung end point nung ating mini measure na object mas malapit ba siya sa 10 or mas malapit ba siya dun sa halfway point so yun so kung mas malapit siya sa 10 estimate since wala naman ditong ibang number kundi si 0 and si 10 then the best thing we can do is to estimate kung gano siya ka tawag dyan, kung gano siya kahaba so yan so in this ruler the graduation is 1 decimeter apart or 10 centimeters so since we only have 0 and 10 markings as a reference for measuring the crayon the best estimate we could make is that the crayon is about a length of 9 centimeters yan so let's look at ruler number 2 so, sabi natin kanina that the crayon is nine, about 9 cm. That is our estimate. But then, when we use a another ruler with more graduation, so meron siya, mas madaming markings, nagkita natin na lampas siya kay 9 cm. So, therefore, we need to, by using another ruler with more graduation, we can um, still give a more precise measurement. So, in this ruler, the graduation between the markings is 1 cm apart. So, relative to the markings in the ruler, our best estimate could be the crayon is 9.1 cm or 9.2 cm. So, again, what we did is that we divide. So, for example, 9 and 10. So, between them, we divide it halfway here. So, for example, at dito yung halfway point niya. And then, so we look at the tip of the, uh, no, the end point of the object we are measuring. Is the tip closer to the halfway point or closer to 9? So here. So since this is closer to 9, we need to estimate. Wala naman tayo dito nakikita. So ang halfway ng 9 and 10 is 9.5. So lower than 9.5, pwede 9.1 or 9.2. So, pwede rin, so, hindi, hindi pwede 9.4 because if it is 9.4, it should be closer to the halfway point. Since closer siya sa 9, our best estimate could be 9.1 or 9.2 cm. So, using a, another ruler with more graduation, ayan. So, using another ruler with more graduation, we can see that, the crayon, so the length of the crayon is more than 9.1 cm. But then again, we have here um, another line. So here, this is 9.1 and then 9.2. So 
So, the crayon is more than 9.1, but we need to determine, is it closer to 9.1 or is it closer to 9.2? So, this is the reading error. So, in actual ruler, diba, meron tayong centimeter side of the ruler, pero ang, ang, tawag dyan, ang smallest calibration niya is millimeter. So, although from 9 to 10, this is 1 cm, pero ito, from 9 to this line is 9.1 cm, 9.2, 9.3, 9.4, 9.5 cm. So, yun. So, this is the reading error of this ruler. So, we need to estimate. So, when, when you arrive to that point where you need to estimate, then that results to the reading error. Kasi, hindi na natin, hindi, hindi tayo pare-pareho. For example, ako mag-estimate ako. Maybe, iba yung estimation ko compared sa ibang tao. So, here, the best estimate that we could have is that the crayon is 9.18 or 9.19 centimeters. So, the more graduated the measuring device is, the smaller the unit it can read. And the more precise is the measurement. So, to compare the three rulers, so ruler number 1 has the lowest level of precision, while ruler number 3 has the highest level of precision. So, ayan. So, ang nami measure ni ruler number 1 is 1 tenth. Precision of the tool is 1 over tenth of a meter. So, precision ng ruler number 2 is 1 over 100 of a meter. And then, precision ng ruler number 3 is 1 over 1,000 of a meter. So, that's why the highest possible, the highest possible um, decimal places is 3, thousands places, ito, hundreds place, and this is ones place. Yun yung highest. So, that's why here in our measurement, we can write 9.0. So this is the, the 10, tenths place rather so tenths place this is the hundreds place so two decimal and dito three decimal points because the precision of a millimeter is one over one thousand of a meter so another example would be measuring the volume using um the graduated cylinder, the pipette, or the burette. So, these are for measuring volumes of liquids or substances. So, all marks and ticks of a measuring device such as the rulers, weighing scale, and graduated cylinder have an inherent limit of precision that is determined by the design and construction of the measuring device. So, yung iba, pwedeng ang limit of precision nila is millimeters. Yung iba, pwedeng ang limit of precision nila is uh, centimeters lang yung iba inches or others sa, sa weighing scale for example ang limit of precision niya is 10, 10 grams for example so iba iba so depende sa pagkakakonstruct ng measuring device so let us answer the following um, exercises so, estimate the volume of the liquid. So, we have here in our first example, the volume of the liquid is, yan, is set here. So, between 40 and 60. So, ano ba ang smallest calibration nitong beaker natin? So, ito 20, 40, and then the halfway point of 20 and 40 is 10. So, meaning, the smallest calibration, so each graduation is 10 um millimeters apart so this is 20 so this the next line would be 30 next 40 this is 50 this is 60 70 80 so, yeah. so how do we uh, no, estimate the measure of the, the volume of this liquid so Okay, so, for example, we have here 40, and then we know that this next mark here is 50. So, for example, I typed it's 50. So, we need to identify the halfway point between 40 and 50, and that would be 45. So, kung nasaan man dyan yung halfway, 
point niya. Yan, so dito. So for example, that is 45. Then we need to ano, we need to identify is it I is the the liquid closer to the 50 markings or closer to the halfway point. So, since it is closer to the halfway point, the best estimate that we could give is, or we could give is that um, the liquid might be 47 ml to 48 ml. Kasi hindi naman al natin alam kung alin ba dyan. So, pwede yung 47 or 46 ml to 48 ml. So, that is our best estimate. So, in our next um, example here, so let's look at this. So this is a graduation cylinder. So the graduation, so 20, this is 25, this is 20, this line. So meaning, each graduation is 1 ml. So 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 ml, 26. Itong line na to, 26. So this one is 19, this one is 18. So, saan ba? Ano ba yung estimate natin? So, we look at the halfway point. So, again, identify nyo ulit yung halfway point. Ngayon, anong ano. Identify nyo yung halfway point ng... Ay, sorry. Okay, so, identify nyo yung, yung halfway point. So, this could be the halfway point here. And, nikita natin na parang nasa halfway point siya. So, determine whether the, the volume... So, remember, kapag ganito, so, nakikita nyo yung meniscus. Sa mga, sil sa cylinder, for example, graduated cylinder, yung mga ano natin, yung mga volume, ay, yung mga liquid natin, will tend to be attracted to the container. So, that's why meron tayong ganyan. So, the liquid is more attracted to the container, that's why we have a curve. So, ang babasahin nyo is this one, yung lower meniscus. So, here, so look at the lower meniscus and then is it closer to the halfway point or is it, um, is it closer to the halfway point or is it closer to the next graduation? So, since, as we can see, it could be lying at the halfway point, then our best estimate for this um, measurement is that the liquid is about 21.5 milliliters. Okay, so let's determine the um, the length of the following object. So we have here um, rectangle and a bar. For example, this is a metal rod. Then let's determine its length. So this is a centimeter ruler. So what is the best estimate for this? Um, what is the best estimate of the measure of this ruler? So, in ruler number 1, as you can see, we have here um, a centimeter ruler that is with ha which has a calibration equivalent to 1 centimeter. So, smallest calibration niya is centimeter. So, yung measurement niya, so yung estimated value niya could be 10 cm. Pero, kung titignan natin sa ruler number 2, so, ayan, if we look at ruler number 2, Excuse me. So if we have, if we look at ruler number two, may kita natin that it is not real exactly at 10 centimeters. So sobra siya, so 10 centimeters. So this measurement could be 10.05 cm since it is in between 10 and then 10.1 cm. So that is our best estimate. Okay, so in our next, in the next video, we're going to discuss the errors in measurements.